40 worst things teachers said at school according to reddit number 40 just cheat on the test if you have to a shining example of our system of education number 39 not the worst thing ever but definitely the worst advice in high school there was a subject i really really liked it was called informatics too but it was mostly basics of graphic design and creative digital stuff in general i was really inspired for a project we had to do and really excelled in it made a green screen at home did some advanced video editing it was through the roof the professor mr v who was in charge of the subject loved it he gave me an a plus showed them to the other groups of students later i was told he would show the video presentation to future students as an example of a well done project the other professor mrs m who taught the same subject but not my group met me a few days later in the hall and told me i saw what you did for professor v's class congratulations it's very good but you shouldn't have done it why you've raised the bar for everyone else so somebody who would have gotten an a plus could now get a b or less i actually took it as it is and it kind of fucked me up for a while wish i could go back in time and tell her to fuck off I'm not in charge of grading, and I've got the right to excel as much as I want, bitch. And that's the goddamn truth. Who the fuck? God forbid people do well and raise the damn bar. Half of the times when I get compliments from people, all I think to myself is, all I know how to do is be me. And like, I feel like if what I'm being is like somehow exceptional, then the bar's gotta be really low. And that's like what being humble is. So I'm sure you feel the same way sometimes when people compliment you guys about anything. You're probably just like, what do you mean? This is what people should be, what to be kind, to be nice, to speak well, to, ugh, to take care of yourself. Like what the hell is going on in a world where what we're doing is above average? What happened to average? Number 38. Now, gentlemen, uncomfortable pause. Oh, right. They let girls in now. And ladies. <laughs> Good save, teach. Good save. I like the idea that there was like some kind of all boys class in this bitch. I remember when in the last years of high school, says a response, I was the only male in the class and teachers would jokingly refer to us as girls and boy. <laughs> Somebody else responds, it was literally the only guy, I was literally the only guy in my chorus class one year. Not only were those kinds of jokes constantly made, but the teacher would get mad at me for being too quiet. I'm sorry that my single voice isn't louder than over 30 girls. Man, sometimes being louder than just one girl is not, it's not even a, a challenge you want to take up, baby. As we continue, for a quick reminder, on the list of 40 worst things teachers said, we arrive at number 37. When I was 12, my teacher said my knitting had too many errors in it. It had four and ripped it to shreds. <sighs> I was supposed to start all over, but excused myself and went to the bathroom where I cried for the rest of the lesson. Come on. Fuck this. This better not piss me off. This better not have teachers overstepping the line just because, you know, they're females and they're, they, they don't know how to control uh, the ability to have authority. You know what I'm talking about? I can't tell you how many teachers I made cry because they were wrong and they needed to know that they were wrong. Or, or oh man, one of my favorites, you've probably heard the story before, was when somebody was trying to take out rage that was misplaced. Like she had another class and she was mad at that class. So everybody in my, my class comes in and she's all mad and we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, we ain't that class. We don't deserve any of this. We are not your outlet lady. Get your shit together or find another, you know, find another work place to to get that shit done because this is this is not you handling it well somebody responds one time we were drawing this part of a photo we saw in art class 
with a pencil and paper. And my friend wasn't very good at drawing, so the teacher took it from him and yelled something along the lines of it being a really bad drawing. He ripped it and crumpled it in front of him and the whole class. This was in grade 5 or 6, and of course my friend was bawling his eyes out. That's so sad. I mean, you expect kids to be jerks, man, but the teachers are supposed to be the adults here and the, the good example. Number 36. Used to have an alcoholic teacher who, when handling out... Handling? There's no L in that, motherfucker. When handing out textbooks, slammed one down in front of a larger boy in our class, pointed at him, and said, don't eat it. Wow. Yeah, the kid cried. Oh my god. Somebody said, as a fat guy who was once a chubby f kid, I laughed. And then again, I also voted myself as most likely to raid the refrigerator in the 8th grade yearbook. Just because most key is jolly, don't mean you can just get away with saying what the hell ever you want to them. Come on now. Number 35, shut the fuck up, said the teacher. I am, a, I am better than God, okay? Not the same teacher. Your mother should have swallowed you. But the kid had it coming, okay. Had that coming. See what they did there? Jesus Lord. Special thanks to patrons Francois, Hope, Luke, Patricia, Sean, and Nuding. You know, I should have said that in the beginning of the video. But I love all of you. Oh my god. Number 34. Man, that girl has some jacked up teeth. Oh my god, you can be saying this shit about people. What what does a student say uh freaking like appearance matter to you? You're not supposed to announce or say anything about it. He said it about one of my friends who had cancer and had half of her jaw removed. I told the principal, um, the teacher admitted he said it, and then I got kicked out of the school. I got kicked out of the school? He got kicked out of school. A response reads, how is it that you get kicked out? The person then responds, who knows? The principal pulled me into his office and the teacher was there. They yelled at me until I cried. He was yelling about how I could have made him lose his job and how selfish it was of me. Nigga, you said it. Where the accountability at? You're the one who said that shit. You can't blame somebody else for, for, for it getting out. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ, couldn't couldn't I keep a secret? He said it in front of a class of 30 people. Me keep a secret? What? He's still teaching. That was 12 years ago. I thought I did the right thing, but what the hell do I know? You poor, this poor person. And people are like, you did do the right thing. <laughs> you stood up for a friend. You were in the right. This guy had no business vocalizing any thought pertaining to any student's physical appearance this shit has nothing to do with you you have a fucking job so shut your mouth and do it you know what i'm talking about people earlier were asking me oh why people don't record people more like when you're at a job like you are at the will of that job you need to just do what it is that you're supposed to do and get the hell out of there you don't exist outside of that teachers do you're dealing with kids you're dealing with kids what are you doing she got busted up teeth. She had cancer, bro. Look, I'm not saying that I want I want to wish cancer on anybody or something. But maybe maybe this teacher needs to learn a little bit of what that's like. Number 33. I was at a rugby practice and we were doing stretches and we were all lying on the ground. And my friend has his head positioned close to my other friend's crotch. My friend says quiet, l quiet. No, my friend says quite loudly, bitch. Why oh, you put them words next to each other like that? <laughs> my friend says quite loudly, looks like you're about to suck my dick. When he realized that our coach, who is also a teacher at our school, heard him and he started to apologize for swearing when our coach says he wants a meal, not a snack. <gasps> Roasted. Number 32, you are incompetent, terrible boy 
who has no decency and will never amount to anything in your life. I'll be surprised if you're even capable of finishing this year, let alone school. Very damaging to nine-year-old me. What chip on your shoulder do you have to have as a teacher to go in and say some shit like this to kids? I know that everybody's human at the end of the day and everybody needs an outlet, but some women, man, psh, just because you're spiraling out of control because you're over a certain hill and you ain't found a man or you ain't getting digged down or you just you don't you don't have an outlet. You know, what I'm talking about these kids ain't your outlet, son. And worse, one kid piss you off. You don't consequence the other kid. You know, what I'm talking about you. What are you some kind of like Disney story, uh, evil stepmother? Where like one kid spills some milk and you call all the kids in there to, to whoop their ass collectively because it has something to do with all of them. Like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? This kid's nine years old. A single digit, baby. <laughs> and you calling him words that he probably couldn't spell. Makes sense. As long as it makes you feel better, brah. You know, and then you could convince yourself that this was in the interest of consequencing this kid and building character for him. Just remove that accountability. You gonna get yours one of these days. And maybe one day when you wake up alone on that fucking deathbed and wonder where the hell everybody's at, you'll know damn well it's because you're the terrible one. Uh, Baba Booey. Number 31. My fourth grade music teacher told us to shut the fuck up. He got fired. She got fired. Oh, it had to be a woman. Oh, man. You know how little fourth grade is, man? Elementary, come on. Come on. You know, I'm not saying that people should be superhuman, you know? It's just like being a police officer. Of course, police officers are going to cap some people at some point. If you put a gun in your hand, and you were thrown into situations that honestly 10 times out of 10 were pretty like pretty violent you were you have a very trigger you'd be trigger happy as fuck too you know what i'm talking about cops got it crazy and they learned that most times uh most times out of 10 people are evil it's not like a happy-go-lucky oh it was just a friendly disturbance type scenario like not only do people get really violent and really bad but when cops show up on the scene they get even worse and they act like cornered animals. So naturally, these cops are on edge. You know what I'm talking about? But when you're a teacher, son, what possesses you? Again, power corrupts. Abs well, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. But still, you've never seen authority in your life. What is making it so that when you have to wrangle a whole bunch of kids together for the purpose of you teaching them something that you're going to start ripping off on these kids and derogatory bullshit that's probably going to scar these kids for life? You have no idea what you have as far as power over the development of somebody uh, when you're a teacher over a child what are you doing you telling these kids to shut their fuck up what the bing bong what's going on in your life you know what i'm talking about is your man coming home and beating you or something you going you oh i'm, I'm these kids gonna get it tomorrow <laughs> guys I hope to God that nothing like this has happened to you because this seems all, you know, sometimes we go through these lists and it's just like, damn, son, this, this shit is crazy. Like, I really hope that you guys have had a relatively reasonable and normal fucking life. Because, uh, you know, tell me in the comment section below if you had a teacher that was just tripping because this is nuts to me. We're going to start flying through these. Number 30, Barrelfly. Did I try to mix both of those words? Paraphilitely? Listen, paraphrasing slightly, but there's no such thing as Asperger's syndrome. Oh yeah, if you don't understand it, then it doesn't exist. This is just attention-seeking behavior. All right, man, you know more about it, you know? Wow, it was said to me about me. Wow. Admittedly, this was over 20 years ago when not everybody had heard of it, but still... I'd have, I'd had two day tests or two day of two days of tests, brain scans resulting in long form diagnosis explanation, which my parents had shared with my teachers. Every other teacher basically reacted with, oh, so that's why he's so weird. Okay, we can work with this, but not this guy. Okay. Okay. You guys got to understand, apply this to your real life. 
You know what I'm talking about? Apply, apply this to your everyday life. Sometimes you're going to deal with fools. But if you waste your time trying to explain to these fools shit that should be blatantly apparent to them, shit that has proof, shit that you can document, then you're becoming the fool for every second you waste explaining the shit to some people. Some people are going to ingest things a certain way, regardless of what reality is, you know? They're going to see it one way, they're going to feel it one way, they're going to they're just going to construct their own narrative and 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 have it be absorbed the way that they want it to be. You can't devote your life to convincing them to see things as they are, okay? Some people just going to wake up and and tell themselves that they know how you feel, shit like this. Get over it because it's not about them. <laughs> and they're just an extra at the end of the day in your life. This is crazy. This is crazy. He don't give a fuck about proof. He 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 has a he has a thought, and that thought is law as far as he's concerned. Wow. Poor kids on the spectrum, man. Nothing sadder than the story, the plight of autistic kids and kids on the spectrum. Cause people around them are constantly not gonna understand. And much like the stories that we read in the past, the focus is always going to be on like what they can't do right, what makes them abnormal, because God forbid they fit through these holes, these these molds that have been made for them the same way these other kids got to jump through them. And the worst part is in a in a in, you know, like a in like a colloquial way, I have to say, we regard them as superheroes because what they are good at, they excel at like you wouldn't freaking imagine. Some of these kids can like glance at something and then draw it from memory. You know what I'm talking about? They're superheroes in their own right, but you're judging you're judging the fish by the ability to climb the tree. You know what I mean? And the problem here is is in how people allow them to develop, you know? Instead of being nurturing and and finding with patience what it is that they are good at, it's it's berating and it's it's having them develop a complex. And the worst part is these people will go to sleep and not think twice about it. But these kids will lie awake, having been completely and utterly devastated um, in a way that there's probably no, uh, no easy repair from. So just be careful with these kids, man. Be careful. Be careful. Number 29, man. I hope none of you are teachers. One, one, are any of you teachers Two, have any of you run into teachers as crazy as this? This is... Man, this whole list got me in, in dead shock. Okay. 29. A teacher told the story of when he was working at a girl's summer camp. The showers had broken down and he had to go fix it for the uh, girls who were mid-shower. They had the girls put their faces to the wall for some reason. Naked bums all along the wall. He told it as if it were a funny anecdote. I was creeped the fuck out and can't imagine how the girls were going to said camp felt about the story well that's just creepy <laughs> that's pretty creepy what the fuck that's just creepy Ugh. number 28 chemistry teacher uh, that got annoyed easily with my class specifically. All right, fuck this. You're all going to fail this exam. People in my class would never shut up. And it was the last week of school, so he was just done with us. Mm -hmm. Number 27. In tryouts for the school's annual Christmas play, the teacher directing the production denied the most talented and well-suited student the part um, of playing the Virgin Mary because the girl was black. Ooh. The teacher said the play would be criticized if a black girl were allowed to play the virgin because everyone knows that Mary was white, as God intended. Oh, snap. World star. You know what I'm talking about? What do you mean, as God intended? Where's the follow up? Did she get fired? Ah, yes, says somebody responding. All those white people in Palatine and Egypt, truly God's chosen ones, sarcasm. Oh my God. She didn't get fired with a response to that, homie. A 
look. Okay. Okay. Number 26. I know it's the last day of term, but we will be working right up to the bell. I love this. Because, you know, the name of the list is just like the worst shit that the teacher said. And somebody was like, this motherfucker. What are you talking about? You telling me we can work? Oh, how, uh, that's the worst thing I ever heard out of a teacher. Number 25. Not all Mexicans are from Mexico. Some are from El Salvador. Oh, yes, those El Salvador Mexicans. Number 24. Just because I'm on a diet doesn't mean I can't look at the menu. Priest in Catholic high school after he was caught looking down a girl's shirt. Oh, my God. I almost prefer that we go back to the unfortunate and like devastating look at just people being jerks and and not nurturing you know people that obviously have conditions as it pertains to autism and asperger's than to branch over into the creepy side of gross teachers you know there's a lot of gross ass kids that a fucking teacher you know what i'm talking about but you know the the fact that these these teachers out here looking it oh these are kids these are your students oh my god can we just skip forward to when we're learning from robots or something? We got to remove teachers from the equation, baby. Oh, we got to we got to remove teachers from the equation. Okay. Dated ass classes and these even more dated ass books. You better read that 20 year old book, baby. You know what I'm talking about? This isn't like oh, this isn't literature. Okay. Oh my god. Number 23. Woodshop teacher telling an Asian kid he doesn't really need to wear a face shield. Uh, is this going where I think it is? <laughs> is this going where I think it is? Woodshop teacher telling an Asian kid that he doesn't need to wear a face shield. You know. Because of the eyes. He meant it as a joke. But even at 15... We all kind of hushed and looked at each other. Like, dude, did he just fucking say that? What the fuck? Safety squint. Ooh, you can squint if you want to. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, number 22. Mrs. Nudell, my third grade math teacher, 1986. I missed two weeks of school due to a horrible case of chicken pox and fell behind with whatever it was that we were working on. A month after, I came back to school, and I was still struggling with math, but was too young and scared to ask for help. We had a test, and I failed. So Mrs. fucking Newdell, okay, brought my third grade self up to the front of the classroom and shamed me. She told the entire classroom that Buffy who will never succeed at math. I ended up crying and going to the nurse with a stomach ache. I'll never forget how awful she was to me, and I struggled with math for the rest of the time that I was in school. That's unfortunate. Somebody says that's terrible, and not all at all what a teacher should do. I was taking lessons to be a teacher, and that one of the first things we've learned is if a student like this, if we have a student like this, then we should find a way to get them caught up, not punish them. <sighs> we can only assume that some people get a kick out of this kind of thing. You understand? And that's the true problem. Number 21. Man, was some plugging and unplugging? Number 21. How dare you write that? You're practically emotionally handicapped. It's psychotic. It's psychopathic? You're practically emotionally handicapped. This was said to me at 12 years old, not even half a year after my mother died. She made us write an essay about our home life, which in retrospect was a fucked up excuse to snoop into my situation. She didn't like that I used humor to cope so she pulled me out of the class to yell at me for five minutes for not being sad enough. 
I don't even remember what I wrote besides cracking some jokes about my dad's outfits. So, okay, this is interesting on a couple of levels. Um, why the hell... Why the hell is she so invested in this kid's life that she gotta be all up in the business following the death of one of the parents, you know what I mean? And then two, God forbid people deal with things emotionally in their own freaking way, right? Because the world is full of what I might refer to as individuals who have their own ways of testing the, in the, the in consistency of the world around them and have different ways of reacting. If we all reacted the same way to everything, then you know what I mean? The world wouldn't be the way that it is right now, I can tell you that. There wouldn't be Burger King and McDonald's, I can tell you that, you know what I'm saying? The bottom line is, this is disgusting <laughs> for an adult. This is just disgusting. Come on, man. People like this can't exist. In a capacity where they're on payroll to be some manner of jackass with a rod firmly de A response reads, my best friend lost her dad to cancer when she was 12 and her mom taught her to use humor to cope. God forbid, right? Humor is like the universal. You, you hear people say laughter is the best medicine. What the fuck? God forbid. So this person, this, this, this adult had a problem with this child coping in any way to the death of a parent? This person was 12 years old? And oh, you're not sad enough? What, what a thing to say. You know what I mean? Some people looking for a slap, all right? She likes to she likes to tell people he died and then ask them if they want to see a picture of her and her dad. And then she shows them a picture of her smiling next to him's tombstone. Her mom died in February. They cremated her, put her in a wine bottle and threw her at the Las Vegas sign. We make jokes about how nuts she was. Man. Something tells me this is going to get real gay as we proceed to the top. Number 20. My high school government teacher told me I was faking an autoimmune illness. Some kind of alarm going off. If I just squeeze the phone, it'll stop. My high school government teacher told me I was faking an autoimmune illness and that I'd never make it anywhere with my laziness. She was trash. Isn't that great? Look, assumptions will, will get you pretty far. You know what I mean? When it comes to an illness or a disease or a condition, you know, and you don't know for sure, why don't you, you think you'd play it safe as an adult? You know what I mean? This person says they had medical documentation to back it up. Oh my God. Someone else responds as a person with an autoimmune disorder. Stuff like this is honestly the only way to offend me. It's honestly, you know what I mean? I don't think a lot of things can get under my skin, but it's like when some people, this kind of thing, when it happens, I assume that it's a joke and they're doing it ironically, but they're serious. Number 19, my history teacher called himself Big Daddy. Well, this would be cool if it was Big Papa and then he asked the students to throw their hands in the air if they were true players. But Big Daddy, that's just weird. Somebody said my history teacher called me the door bitch because I let students into class. Somebody else said my homeroom teacher liked saying only loose women and whores hang out at doors. Okay. Somebody said, I got to start hanging out by more doors. <laughs> Number 18, my grade eight teacher in science would pick on this girl in the front row. One time he was going to make a joke about her breath being so bad he could see it. Instead, he said, I can see your breasts to a 14 year old girl. How'd that go for him? There's these, these are, I'm dying.
this is a reference I don't understand. And we could go on that adventure right now. Ass man, balls deep. No, I don't think I want it. I don't think I want to know. I don't think I want to know. I don't think you want to know. Number 17. It's impossible to rape a male if he gets a boner. He wanted it from a middle school government teacher. Nice. So by that logic, a woman isn't raped if she gets wet and or has an orgasm. I'm pretty sure people believe that as well. Somebody said next day headline 45 year old male teacher raped by students after claiming men can't be raped. What are you going to do? Rape me? Gets raped. <laughs> Number 60, man. That's a pretty that's a pretty intense uh that's a pretty intense way to prove your point. Number 16. Okay, I have one. When I was in elementary, I got confused at lunchtime and threw my food out early and wandered outside for recess alone. Interesting. When I was when I was in elementary, I got confused at lunchtime and threw my food out early and wandered around outside for recess. Realizing my mistake and having no idea what to do, I went back inside and told the lunch lady and asked what I should do. She dragged me by the arms to the center of the lunchroom with a live microphone. Where the hell did the, the lunch lady get a live mic? And informed everyone of my mistake and how no one should do what I did because it was a bad thing. She told everyone I was going to get expelled. I was sobbing at that point. I kept asking her what expelled meant, but she didn't answer me, and I knew that it was a bad thing. I never told my mom until years later, and no, I didn't actually get expelled. What the hell was she doing with the lunch ladies in my experience are either some sort of the nicest, most caring women you'll ever meet, or just straight up old bitching hags. Well, there's not really an, an in-between, typically. My my question is what the lunch lady was doing with a loud mic, with like a you know what I mean? What what's she doing with a hot mic? What what are their speakers doing in your uh? You know what I mean? I can understand if like like the, there's like a PA system that connects to the the main office or something, so they can inform people to go down to the office or if like there's an emergency or something. But how could the how could the lunch lady just get into the whatever? I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's fucking weird. Number 15. First day on the job, teacher walks in as the new CAD teacher and his name's on the board. It looks like you'd pronounce it ass man. He announces right away that it's not and that you will be thrown out of his class if you ever call him that. He does roll and gets to a French African name that looks like it might be pronounced for a gay slur. Starting with F. Oh. You mean faggot. <laughs> Does not use better judgment and uses that slur as a last name. It's pronounced Fage, ass man. Kid obviously had to deal with this problem his whole life and was not keen on the mix up. The new teacher blows up and is hollering at the 16 year old who's not backing down. He takes a bit, but they both disappear. The teacher was never seen in the building again. This was first period, first day of school. Look, I'll say one thing, man. If you got a name and it sound like ass man and it look like ass man, don't call nobody a faggot if you don't want no people call you ass man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Holy crap. I like that Fage became a legend. <laughs> Fucking Fage. Number 14. That's the best one here, by the way. I'm going to upvote that. Don't know if you guys can see my upvotes. Now you can. Now you can see the upvotes. Number 14. When I was in high school, a gym teacher came up to me one day and towards the end of the class, when everyone was just kind of freely shooting basketballs and hanging out on the bleachers, I was standing by myself and he walked up and asked me something about the neighboring town. He said, did you know that in Olney, 
they used to hang niggers with velvet? Wow. And then he just walked away. I was the only time he ever talked to me. I'm white, and he was a black guy. Maybe 6'8"? I think he was in the NBA for a season or something. Everybody loved him, so I guess he was just messing with me. But he got me pretty good. That must have just broke you on the inside. <laughs> he was black and he came up and was like, man. But with the hard R, that's the real question. If I walk up to somebody and say, hey, man, you know they used to hang niggas out there? People are like, okay. But if I go, hey, did you know they used to hang niggers out there? And he'd be like, what? <laughs> you'd literally respond like that. You'd be like, okay. This is, this is, this is, only sounds crazy. What is happening here? What is happening? Are there references? What is happening? Number 13. Male teacher was talking about the dress code to me and a friend of mine during lunch. He stated he doesn't like seeing a bunch of fatties in short shorts, but then gestured towards a thin girl in short shorts walking up the step and said, but that that I don't mind Ooh. oh my god somebody else said I had a girl at school get in huge trouble for her dress one day it didn't break the dress code on her and another girl was wearing the exact same dress and it did break it for her the girl in trouble asked why she was the one being disciplined. Because she looks good in it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Now, listen. Let's read this one. I had something similar to happen to me in high school. Wow. I was wearing a necklace that was a shortened version of a belt that was popular at the time. Principal walks over and asks me to remove my necklace. When I asked why, she says because you could use it as a weapon. Cue individual um, walking by wearing this full size belt. I respond with, well, better make them take off her belt because if this is a weapon, then theirs is more effective and longer length of a weapon. Principal, nope, that's a belt and it couldn't be turned into a weapon. I refused to remove the necklace, ended up being suspended from school for a day. Everyone else was still allowed to wear the belt. I was not allowed to wear the necklace. I've never had any prior aggression to other students or anything that would make me more likely to use a weapon as a necklace or a necklace as a weapon. <laughs> the principal ended up being shot by a student years after I graduated. Really sad situation. But with the way she treated particular students, it didn't surprise me at all. She really liked to single out kids for whatever reason and harp on them for anything and everything. Well, it looked like she got what was coming to her, the dumb hoe. Why you gonna be a dumb hoe? There's enough of those in the world. Be something different, guys. You know what I'm talking about? What the fuck you mean that can't be used as a weapon? It's a belt. <laughs> There aren't a lot of, like, default punishment weapons out there, you know what I mean? But a belt's got to be, you know, we play, we play a family feud, and, you know, what's up on the board, you know? What's up, what's up on, I'm, I'm putting you over my lap to punish you, what am I going to use? The hand is up there, maybe a paddle, maybe a wooden spoon, but the belt for sure is on that board. But a gun founder, you know what I'm talking about? All the other kids with the pumped up kicks, they better run, run, run. Outrun my gun. <laughs> Faster than my bullet, though. Number 12. When I was a senior in high school, I had a teacher tell me that if I wanted to kill myself, I had to follow the highway, not cross it. It's true, guys. 
You can't just slice however at the vein if you're trying to kill yourself. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about? It's, it, that's education at its finest. You can't blame the guy. He's teaching you little niggas something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody responds, my sixth form tutor told us the same thing. He used to work as a counselor for recovering drug addicts and had that patience. Ooh, he, that committed suicide. Now that I think about it, I do hope that he didn't give his patients advice. Look, when it comes to suicide, there's not really advice. There's just like, I don't know, information. Don't try to OD, because many times people try to OD and they just end up paralyzed. You can fuck up your body in ways that you didn't even know was possible, baby. Then you really will wish to die. You know what I'm talking about? Make it, make it definitive. Don't fuck around. Number 11. I just wish I was fucking dead. That's what a teacher said? Wow. Overheard by complete chance while wandering the corridors during a free period. Wandering the corridors. Like I'm, I'm picturing like a Harry Potter style scene. Turned right back around and took the long route so I wouldn't have to walk past the classroom. It was a bit of a broken pedestal moment for me, but I never told anyone else about it. The teacher who said it was one of our most beloved history teachers, who we later found out had been stopped from committing suicide at least twice by one of the deputy heads, who'd been friends with him ever since their university days. Not stopped as in talked things out and convinced him it was the best way to deal with his problem, but in physically picked up and dragged him away from the window. Ugh. Man, that's crazy. Number 10, my science teacher in the seventh grade called a Mexican kid in my class a fence hopper during the middle of class. You know, all of these are mysteriously missing any kind of uh, consequence for a lot of this shit. Somebody said, in the same vein, I had a high school teacher that nicknamed everyone. His name for my friend from Syria was Green Card. Oh my God. Somebody else said, my culinary teacher in high school did this, straight up called me Pablo, even though that wasn't my name, simply because I was Hispanic. He called the Middle Eastern kid terrorist and the red redhead, the redneck kid NASCAR. I wish I was joking. Okay, Pablo is insensitive, terrorist is insane, and NASCAR is, it's all in good fun, I think. You know what I mean? There's nothing that rude about it. Y'all yeah, yeah, niggas won the... We, we, you win the lottery, you wake up and you're white. You know what I'm talking about? So d d take it all on the chin. You know, have a have a bit of tea and crumpet. And carry on here, guys. But them other ones are a little bit nuts. <laughs> Terrorist. Number nine. Not the worst, but it really fucked with me. There are literally millions of other cute little Chinese girls just like you. That are much better than you and can replace you. What an interesting thing to say. So they hit us with an edit because we want more. For context, I study animation and am also Chinese. I was asking my teachers for advice on how to get better at drawing faster as I wasn't very happy with my skill level and was stressed about being left behind by my peers. Most of my teachers were very supportive, but obviously not all of them. I did work very hard to spite him, though, and did get a scholarship from it. You just can't break my spirit. Somebody said, I go to, they, I go to a school in the U.S. and that he happened to be a white male teacher. Wow. But there are mean people from every race and gender. I can't imagine what would provoke somebody to say something like that. There are, there are literally millions of other cute little Asian girls because there's like the creepy vibe of that too. You know what I mean? What is her being cute? What does the physical appearance have to do with anything, dude? So you, you've you you've iced your douchebag comment with that creepy glaze. You know what I'm talking about? Right on top of that, that cinnamon roll of asshole. The cinnamon roll of asshole. That sounds like a, like a good uh, record. Hold on me. Cinnamon... Roll. Asshole. 
Cinnamon roll asshole. Worst poem for your sprog, isn't he normally in these things? Look, I I feel terrible. I feel terrible that these people are out there. Hey, look, somebody who understands Reddit's, uh, you know, text well enough to make certain things bigger. So here we go. Number eight. Congratulations. You're a marriage of Dumbo's made in heaven. What? I had a teacher in elementary school who, after every test, would pick the lowest scoring girl and the lowest scoring boy in the class and force them to hold hands. We need we need cameras in the classroom. We need cameras in the classroom. You know? Because if these are the types of women who are going to go home and watch a Dr. Phil episode or I don't know, maybe a favorite like televangelist from whatever religion they subscribe to and decide that these are great ways to to get kids to do the right thing, you know? Because, again, we're not dealing with individuals. We're dealing with something that would work for them. So why wouldn't it work for everybody else? Do you know what I mean? It's nuts. It's like you go to a doctor and he prescribes something to you. And you're just like, well, I think I know better about it. You know what I mean? And this isn't you getting a second or a third opinion from another person who is trained in this profession. This is, this is just you winging it. What the hell are you talking about? You taking the lowest scores you publicly making it making it a shameful event having them you know physically involved with one another she would pro she would have them perform a brief marriage ceremony in front of a laughing class without the kissing part because that would be going too far and then have all the other kids sing here comes the bride this is this is a very constructive use of the of the class's time then she'd have the two kids sit together at the side of the classroom for the rest of the lesson and they weren't allowed to stop holding hands until the bell rang we need cameras in the classroom the answer is yes that did happen to me three weeks was about how long the teasing lasted and six years was roughly how long me and the groom avoided speaking to each other after <laughs> out of residual humiliation so people pester this guy because they want juicy details and he goes on to say this was in the early 2000s i'm not from the u.s i didn't tell my parents i honestly didn't think it was such a honking huge giant deal kids get punished all the time right i'm from a culture where teachers are considered authority figures and to be respected so no adult would have defended us unless i was being physically hurt or something right I'm surprised so many of you are as outraged on my behalf. You're all sweethearts. I'm not permanently scarred by this, just kinda salty. Can't speak on the other kids uh, affected though. But after a day's worth of angry crying, nobody seemed overly traumatized. Most importantly, did it work? Were you a better student from then on? Did you studiously avoid getting the lowest grade in the class? The answer is no. <laughs> That's how you know the uh, the consequence, uh, the, the punishment is effective when it yields no results, you know? In many ways, it'll make you want to fail harder. Yeah. Somebody responds, that is insanely fucked up. It's sadistic in its level of cruelty. Someone else responds, I swear that there's a small minority of teachers who do the job because they love torturing kids and it gives them the power to do so. Like I said before, some people don't know what authority tastes like and the fact that they're given free reign over some people and just capable of doing what they want to do and knowing that they can get away with it. It's a power trip, baby. Oh my God. Somebody else says, when I grew up and went to school, there were certain teachers who would hurt the children any way they could. You can't hurt the children by pouring their derision on anything they did, exposing every weakness, however well hidden, by the kids. Well, 
whatever it takes to get your rocks off, ladies. Number seven, one of my college professors straight up said one day, from my experience, African Americans tend to drop out of my class the most. It's probably too hard for them. Any of you notice how we haven't seen that one black chick who used to sit in the front for weeks now? Guy was immediately shot down when the black chick raised her hand from the back row saying she'd been here the whole time. She just wanted to move to the back row because that's where her boyfriend was sitting. Nice. I would I would have raised my hand and said, you know, I just didn't want to be this close to a racist, you white honky nigga. And come on down to the white honky nigga waffle house. I'm kidding. I wonder if Rosa Parks would have gone to the back of the bus if her boyfriend was there. Come on, guys. Seriously, though, as a black woman, she should have been a little bit faster with that with a with a with a shut the hell up type comment. You know what I'm talking about? If you if, if you are a black woman, you're in a class. Some dude goes, black people fail my class. Isn't it weird that that black girl that used to be here ain't in the class no more? And you're in the back of the class and this fool don't see you. What do you raise your hand and say? What the fuck did you just say? I'm so glad that I was recording this to play back later because what the hell are you talking about, baby? And then I, I'd raise my hand and say, say hello to the internet and just let me let me see how, how pale this motherfucker can get. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I moved back here because of my boyfriend. Stupid. <sighs> Somebody else responds, I may be wrong, please correct me if otherwise, but wasn't Rosa Parks thing because she was at the front of the black part of the bus and she was asked to move further back as a white man wanted her seat? Or did she literally go, fuck you bigots, and just straight up sit in the front? Just want to know as I have heard both versions and want to be sure. I don't know if this is a reference to, uh, to uh, Boondocks that did a really funny skit on like the misunderstanding of, of Rosa Parks but trust me man all y'all need to know is that she she put a foot down you know what I'm talking about to the racism that's what matters that's what survived and it's what matters number six whoever threw that paper your mom's a hoe <laughs> I've seen this we've seen this video we've all seen this video it was like a vine it's like a pretty popular vine Somebody said, yes, we've all seen that video. Somebody's like, I ain't seen the video, though. What you say? What you say? I say, whoever threw that paper, your mom's a hoe. What you say? <laughs> your mom's a hoe. Okay, there you go. Number five. Not really the worst, but once in high school, my teacher legitimately asked the blind girl in our class, why she wasn't going up to check her grade on the grade sheet. One of my favorite lines in Daredevil, uh, it has Matt Murdock, uh, you know, he plays Daredevil. He's a blind superhero for those of you who don't know. Um, I think one of the characters says something like, it's not as, it's not as easy as it looks in the movies. And Murdock goes, I don't really watch movies. <laughs> and you're like, he's blind. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't really watch movies. It's all in the delivery. Number five. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's uh let's see the comments here. Okay, so in response to the blind person comment, someone writes, I have a friend with a bilateral cochlear implants. Okay. That is, he was born deaf and still has less than average hearing with the implants. Well, back in high school, he was in several of my classes. Stand-up guy, really nice, yada yada. Any day, any way, one day, any way one day. One of our teachers asks him some banal questions. Here's a transcript of the following interaction. Friend, what? Teacher repeats question. Friend, sorry, what? Teacher, jokingly. What? Are you deaf or something? Friend, yes. Teacher looks horrified and entire class and friend start dying laughing. Teacher apologizes profusely. Luckily, she was actually a super nice lady and basically forgot my friend was, in fact, deaf without his implants. <coughs> Lame. Number four. 
One day in a history class, my professor, who is at least 80 years old, damn, you got an 80 year old professor? Octogenarian up in the, was talking about bed fellows in Victorian England. Bed fellows? And was saying how common it was for men to sleep together. He used himself as an example and said that he used to sleep with his grandfather all the time as a child. After he said that, though, he looked at the ground and said to himself audibly, I still wonder to this day if he molested me. <laughs> then he looked back at us, shrugged, and said, oh well, too late to know for sure now. It was fascinating to see someone overcome deep-seated trauma so quickly. That's pretty dark. Somebody else responds, I think he just used dark humor or something. Unlike movies, people don't tend to talk about themselves and they make sudden realizations. Also, generally speaking, teachers tell the same anecdotes every year semester. So why would he have the realization during class? I mean... Everyone's different, so you never know. People are weird. People are weird. Number three. This wasn't said directly to me, but in middle school, I had a teacher grab me from the lunch table and drag me to the principal's office. After grilling me for a while and telling me I know what I did, they finally revealed to me that the teacher stated she witnessed me suggestively sucking my thumb while staring at a female friend of mine. I was just biting my nail. <laughs> Assumptions. Did you bite your thumb at her, sir? No, sir. I bite my thumb, but not at her. Do you quarrel, sir? Sorry. Number two. Age of nine. Lost my father in a horrific accident. I returned to school a few days later, and after attendance was taken, the teacher said to me in front of the class, the class got together and sent flowers to your father's funeral. I paid your share. So make sure you bring in two dollars tomorrow as I need to be paid back. She then went on with the lessons. Wait, 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 wait. This kid's father dies. When, when the kid comes in, the teacher says to the kid whose father died, the class got together to send your dead dad funeral flowers, but me, the teacher, paid your share, the son whose dad just died. So the son whose dad just died needs to bring in two dollars to pay the teacher back? As many people have asked what happened, I asked to ski the school nurse and was sent home. Can can I can't tell you how many times I've gotten the fuck up, walked out of class and just reiterated my story on paper to people because why do you need to excuse yourself? When somebody makes a complete ass of themselves, you stop talking to that person and you get the hell out of the situation. There's no need for all of these like pleasantries and illusions and like, may I please go see the nurse? I have to use the bath. Nah, nigga, bounce. You know what I mean? What are you talking about? There's like insensitive and then there's just like barbaric stupidity. What are you talking about? Oh, returning to the school two days later, I never saw the teacher again. I don't know how my mother handled it. She handled it one way or another. She handled it one way or another. What a dumb bitch. She said this to a nine-year-old kid. I don't know. <laughs> That's the world, guys. At least it's not kid rape. Thank God. Number one on the list of 40 worst things teachers have said is skew. Reads as follows. When I was nine years old, Another nine one? It's always weird when they're really next to each other like this. When I was about nine, our teacher asked the class what we wanted to be when we grew up. One kid said he wanted to be a bin man, a garbage guy for the US people. 
the teacher went into a rant saying that jobs like those were for the lowest, most unintelligent people in society and that he should aspire to be better than that. Finally, she asked why he wanted to be a bin man anyway. And then he said, because my dad's one, said the kid, now in tears. I just love how she had to stick her dick in that. You know what I mean? Like everybody's dying to be a teacher or something. Stupid. Somebody else responds, I was always taught to never disrespect a man's livelihood unless it's dishonest. The teacher is an ass. A man's work is how he provides for himself and those dependent on him. Not a soul can judge him for that. Come on now. Somebody else responds not to mention that this is likely a high paying job depending on where you live. Someone else says the kid's dad probably made just as much money as the teacher, to be completely honest. He probably made more than the teacher. Someone else responds, that's probably why the teacher spoke so strongly against it. Them bin men be making more than him. It's stupid, she ranted. It's senseless, she raved. They're clearly unskilled and unschooled and depraved. It's plainly apparent and simple to see. And also... They're making more money than me. Who has time for these people up their asses? This is why most people avoid the classes. Nick Offerman's Father's Day. Whiskey, fun, and wood. Oh, man, he looking, he looking like Gollum in this picture. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Gollum, guys. You remember, remember Lord of the Rings, guys? I love how this is like a saga with what's going on with Jeff Kaplan. Oh, God. Guys, I hope you have a great day. I want to take the time to record this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Get out of the car. What the hell? Get away from that. Oh, my God. An artificial intelligence developed its own non-human language. That's kind of weird. What's going on here? Look at all the X-Mans. Think we'll ever regain the rights to them? They said it couldn't be done with, with Spider-Man over at Sony, but we figured it out. Guys, I will catch you guys soon. I'm going to call up Stripes and attack her. Not in a mean way. Just want to figure out what she's... Whoa, guys, I just said remember Lord of the Rings, and Lord of the Rings is trending right now? Why? Why is Lord of the Rings trending? Oh, because of this story? That's adorable. That's adorable. For those of you who don't know, someone recently posted a picture of a map that they drew for their mother 10 years ago. Because I think the story was that their mother tried to watch Lord of the Rings but was upset and frustrated because she couldn't understand it. So to help her follow, the, the, the child drew a map of Middle Earth. Okay? And shows, you know where where they go on the journey across middle earth over the course of the movies i'm sure the story is in there i might as well just read it to you for the sake of the anecdote so i was 15 at the time and i dug the shit out of the lord of the rings mom you want to watch these awesome movies with me no why i saw the first one when it came out and i didn't like it why because I had no idea what the fuck was going on, that's why. Sweet, they're in Rovendal. Oh, oh shit, we're in Mercia. Oh fuck, that guy died. Uh, who is he again? I don't know what the characters are talking about. Okay, I can see that. So I drew a map of Middle Earth. 
I managed to convince her to watch the movies with me and every now and then I would pause the VCR, explain what was going on, and draw where the various characters were going. She was skeptical at first, um, though we had recently read The Hobbit together, very good read guys, which helped. I helped her understand what the fuck the characters were on about and she slowly started digging the shit out of these movies. Eight hours later, the credits of her return of the king were rolling. She turned to me and went, that was fucking amazing. I know, right? Um, I really just needed some context to appreciate this shit. I know, right? You need to draw another map. We're doing this again. I, wait, what? So turns out she had told all of her workmates at the staff room about me forcing her to spend one of her days off watching this goddamn Lord of the Rings movie crap. All of her workmates went, Jesus Christ, why? They're so fucking boring. I never want, I never know what the hell they're talking about. Next Monday, she comes in all giddy, going, oh my God, that was fucking amazing. And, and I go, what? And she goes, the Lord of the Rings, it was awesome. And she goes, you actually watched that? And then they said, yes, here's why I loved it. So she told the other teachers, oh, they're all teachers. So this all kind of fits with this, uh, the craziness. She told the other teachers that I was so much of a fucking nerd that I was able to explain the plot of Lord of the Rings to someone who knew next to nothing about it. Okay. Um, two weeks later, seven middle-aged women are in my living room. The fuck? Did you draw the map? What the fuck? The map, the map, the Middle Earth map. Uh, that's what this is all about? You want to watch Lord of the Rings again? Yes, I told you this like last night. How do you not remember that? Well, I was a bit drunk last night. Fine. Just draw the map while we go out and get boxes of wine. This shit is happening. Okay. So for the rest of the Saturday, I watched the entire trilogy with seven elementary school teachers, explaining the lore and setting to them as they got progressively drunker. Honestly, it was kind of a blast. They all cried when, well, I'm not supposed to read the spoiler as if you guys haven't seen Lord of the Rings. They all cried when someone died. They all cheered at the charge of Rohirrim, Rohirrim, sorry. And they all cried again at the you bow to no one. It was pretty great. I went to bed that night to the sound of seven drunk teachers debating whether Gollum was a good guy or not. I've fallen asleep to worse. Not sure where I was going with this story, but I just found the maps and all of these memories came flowing back. Well, there you go. I think the comedy is that these are teachers, but you know, they had difficulty following Lord of the Rings. So high five Tolkien, you've done it again. So what's going on with this AI that can, uh, that can have its own language independent of humanity he's probably all like he's probably all like you know that zero zero one crap forget all that it's all about it's all about two 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 threes and stuff yeah baby twos and threes language that's not funny i'm sorry stripes isn't here she's the one with the comedy forgive me okay I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Love you.